What is up everyone? Welcome to the third episode of the Rust for Beginner series where we are creating a complete trading engine, a matching engine from scratch where we build things up and make it more complex over time so you guys have a complete project in Rust which will cover everything you need to know to become a professional. So let's get, uh, let's continue where we left off. Um, let's open up. I think the order book and we also had uh, engine if I'm correct and let me also do a cargo run to see where we went or so we uh, can place limit orders uh, yes 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 I remember I remember all right so the next thing we need to do is actually fill uh, we can place limit orders right but we also need to fill we need to also need to place market orders and we are going to fill both orders with each other and the main goal is to basically a market order always gets filled on the best price right and the prerequisite is basically that market orders always needs to get filled if there is not enough volume then we have a problem right uh, so let's actually start with limit and let me put out this mo uh, mouse pointer. Where is my limit? Here is the limit, right? So to recap, a limit is basically a bucket that is sitting on a certain price level containing a bunch of orders from different people with different sizes, right? That's a limit. So we have new, we have add order. We're gonna make a new function. We're gonna say uh, fill order. Like this, we're going to say um, we need a mutable self. We need the market order, which is an order. And we're going to return probably nothing. We will see. We will see what we need. If, it's, if we need something, then we will make it return something. All right. So if you want to fill an order, we need to loop through the order. So we could say something like for uh, order actually a limit order so we have a good uh, separation in uh, self self orders and we could say iter and we need a uh, mutable limit order so we could say iter mute i guess and Then we're going to say, we're going to match based on the size. And let me explain this uh, in a bit. So we're going to say match market order size. And we could do, actually, uh, we're going to say match the market order size is bigger or equal than the limit order size like this and we could say if that's true we're gonna do some logic and if that's false we're gonna do some logic what's going on here false all right um is this gonna work that's a good question yes so we're gonna say because if the market order if the size of the market order is bigger than the limit order that basically means we are gonna completely fill that limit order and then we need to go to the next order because we still have some partial size left in our market order, right? But if the market order is smaller than our limit order, that basically means we can fill the market order and the limit order will still have uh, a partial size left. That's, that's the thing. And we need to keep ranging through the orders until our market order is filled. And if the total volume sitting in our limit is completely gone we need to loop we need to fetch the next limit but that's not uh for our limit implementation that will be for the order book limit uh, implementation you will see you will see hold on and like i mentioned if there are questions leave it in the comment uh, ju jump into the discord and like always i'm answering every single question single-handedly um yes all right so if the market order size is bigger uh, or equal than the limit order size, that basically means that the limit order size <coughs> is going to be minus, no, it's going to be the market order size minus the limit order size 
And then we're going to say that the, it basically means that the limit order is completely filled. So we're going to say the limit order size is going to be zero, right? And I think because there's a trouble, right? So I already, without even seeing at the compiler error, I think uh, here is a problem because we say, yo, this market order is an order, not mutable, not even uh, a borrow, nothing, just a plain order, copied. Uh, but we cannot, we are modifying, right? We are modifying the state of the market order. So we need to say that uh, this is going to be a mutable order and it's all right, right? We're going to borrow that order as a mutable. So that's fine. Uh, in case that's not the case, so in case the market order, the size of the market order is smaller than the limit order, that means that the uh, limit order size is going to be minus the market order size, uh, like this. And then we're going to say that the market order size is going to be zero, right? So it's going to be, it's going to be filled. And let's open up real quick the same file on the other side and search order here. In this case, we don't need to, sometimes I do this, open up two of, two of the same files uh, in different windows. So because then I can sit at my limit here and go to my order here and implement a new function. We could say, for example, uh, pub fn is filled. And let me make this higher up so you guys can see this better. Uh, pub is filled and we're going to make this uh, self. What's going on? It's my uh, VS Code and Vim bindings going local. And we're going to say this is going to return a bool. So when is an order filled? Well, it's filled if the size, the self size, uh, What's going on here? Equals zero, right? Then it's filled. I'm gonna close this file like this. Because we're gonna keep looping, right? So we're looping through all orders. And when do we need to stop looping? Well, if the market order is filled. So we're gonna loop here. We're gonna match. And say here that if the, we could say if market order, uh, if market order is filled, then we could say something like um, break, right? And let me double check real quick. I think that should be good. And um, let's start with creating some tests here. So I'm going to say um, CFG, I think it's tests or tests, not quite sure. Uh, wait, I make a, it needs to be this brackets. We're going to say CFG test or tests. Not quite sure what it needs to be, to be honest. You're going to say pub mod uh, test. And I think it's tests or test. Yeah. And then uh, we could do, first of all, we're going to say use. We're going to uh, use super everything, right? import everything into this thing. So we have access because it's a separate module, right? And then we're going to say, for example, um, test. And we could say fn limit order fill. Something like that. And of course, we should actually make separate separate files so we don't need to prefix this with limit order. Um, but it is what it is. So Yes, we're going to say, first of all, make me a limit. We need a price, actually. Uh, let price is going to be a price. New. Uh, I think we could say, let's say it's going to be 1,000. Like this. doesn't really matter. Eh? And then we're going to say, let the limit. And it's going to be immutable. Right? Why is it needs to be mutable? Because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna add orders, and if we're gonna add orders, we're gonna update the state, and then it, and then we need a mutable, a mutable limit. <coughs> so we're gonna say a let mute limit is going to be a limit. A new, we're gonna give it a price, like that. What's going on here? Alright, so we have our limit, and then we're gonna say let 
let's say let's uh, buy a buy limit order like this that could be an order new it's bid or ask so if it's a, a buy you need to say it's a bit right what's going on it's a bit and then we need to specify a size let's say um, 100 right 100 size <clears throat> and then we're gonna say then we want to say limit uh, add me this order into my buckets and it's gonna be buy limit order like this and then we are gonna make a new order right we're gonna make a market order we're gonna say uh, market sell order right because if we if we wanna if you want to fill, we need to we need to fill buys with asks. So this needs to be an ask. And let's say it's 99. So we can see difference. Uh, and then we could say limit a fill order. And we're going to fill the market sell order. Right? And it's going to be a problem because uh, we need to have mutable. Right? Cool, and then we could do something like uh, print, print LM, uh, and do a debugging like this, and then we could say the limit. Just print me out the limit so we could have a good understanding, and maybe a semicolon here, and um, you can actually run test like here in VS Code. You can just click it, and we have a verbose logging, right? So what do we see? Um, we can see our limit. This is our price level. That's all good, all good. We have orders. We have one order sitting, right? We made one limit order. And now the size is one. It, it was 100, but now it's one. Why? Because we matched it with a market order. We completely filled a market order. Um, so we could actually test this. <coughs> we could say uh, assert equal this macro. And then we could say... Um, First of all, we could say that the market order, the market sell order is filled, and that should be true, right? That should be true. And the next thing we could do is also assert equal, like this. And we could say that the limit gets, um, limit orders get, and get me the first one, because we only have one. And it's not the best practice to grab something with an index. Uh, and especially not unwrapping it, but it is what it is for testing. That could be okay. We're going to say unwrap, get me the first one, unwrap the, the result, right? Could be uh, some or none, right? Uh, unwrap it into some. And then we're going to say um, that should be the size, actually, right? Because we have an order. And then we could say the size should be one, right? The resting, the resting thing. And let me test uh, this test real quick. Up, and it's passing. That's fine. Because if we say, for example, this is going to be 100, and we test again, well, then we have a panic because, yo, um, we have zero, and we expect one, right? So that's already uh, good. So we're going to say 99. <coughs> so now we need to actually test this because this is um, limit order fill. You could say it's going to be a single fill, right? Because we, we filled our market order with one single limit, right? But what if we, uh, let me copy this whole thingy. And what if we say, uh, test like this. And what if we say that our market order, so we have this buy limit order, let's say buy limit order A, and we make also a buy limit order B, and they both have, 100 and then we're going to say uh, add me a and add me b to the bucket of limits then we're going to make a sell order right and if this stays 99 we can fill it with one because one uh, limit order will cover this 99 value but if i say yo this is going to be 199 right then we need to have two limit orders and let's see if that works so, uh, of course, our market order is filled will be true. Uh, the limit or the first limit order, we could say the first limit order is 
uh, filled, right? It should be filled. But the second limit order, uh, that should be false, right? And we could also say that the second limit order is size should be zero, right? I hope that makes sense. And I think we made Oh, yeah, 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 single fill, and this is going, <laughs> we have the same files, uh, name. we're going to say there's going to be a multi-fill, like this, and uh, let's test this real quick, all right, and that's working, so, but I want to see basically what's uh, inside of this uh, limit, so you guys can see what's going on, um, we're going to say print ln, of course, they need a macro with the exclamation mark. We're going to say, um, it's going to be like this, debug, right? And then we're going to say the limit, like this. Let's print that out. Let's run the test. Where is my limit? Here is my limit. And we can see that the... Uh, we have orders, we have two orders, right? We, we added two limit orders in the books, well, in the limit, right? Uh, because the limit is a step lower than the books. We have the books, which contains a bunch of limits, ask and bits, and then we have the limit, which contains a, a price and a, and a bunch of orders sitting at that price. So we see the first order is zero, right? Because we completely filled that. And then the next order uh, is also partially filled, which is um, 0.1. So it's all working fine which is uh, muy bien. All right, so what we can do is also something very important because like I mentioned before, if we place a market order, right? And let's say our total volume of the exchange sitting in the asks, for example, is 100, but we are gonna place a market order for 200, then we have an issue because we cannot fill this market order because there is not enough liquidity. We need to find a way um, to build this logic up uh, we, of course, cannot uh, call, check this in the limit itself. We need to check this in the order book. But it would be nice that uh, we are going to do a helper function in the limits to check how many total volume, how many liquidity is sitting at that price level, right? So we could uh, do something like uh, fn total volume. Total volume, and that's going to be uh, a self. Right, that's gonna return an F64, and we're gonna say something like um, we could say self orders. Uh, let me quickly think about this. Uh, self orders, we are gonna map, I think, self orders iter, maybe like this. Then we're gonna map this. And we could uh, map it, which basically means we could do something like um, orders iter, order, give me the order size, right? And then we're gonna say reduce uh, a b, and then we could say a plus b. Is that a thing? All right, so that's gonna that can be an issue. Uh, so let's say something like. Let's uh, volume, and we're gonna say that's gonna be an F64, and then maybe return the volume so the compiler will have a little bit of a better time. Self orders either. Let me quickly see what's going on here because uh, oh, that's an option. Uh, that's an option. So let's say unwrap this real quick. Uh, what's going on here? All right, uh, so that's working. So let me, we could do this, right? Um, so let me recap, because this can be a little bit of tricky, but if you're using JavaScript or something, uh, most likely you, you already did some shenanigans like this where you are reducing and, and, and map reduce, right? So the first thing we do is, hey, give me my orders, right? Which is a vec. We say, turn this into an iterator, map the order and map it only because an order is a struct, map it only into these uh, F64 of sizes 
right? And then we're going to reduce this, and we're going to basically reduce is grab an order, um, add that to our uh, initial value, which is zero, and then each time it's going to grab um, grab that initial value, which is incremented by the size and keeps incrementing by the next size of uh, of the order. And in this case, uh, by the end, we will have the total volume sitting of all the orders sitting at that limit. And then we need to unwrap this because it's returning an option. And um, yeah, we don't want an option. I want an F64, so I'm unwrapping it. And if that's an error, it's going to panic, but hey. So we can say uh, volume here, and then we can return volume here, but we can also just say, uh, hey, return me this whole shebang, and uh, we call it a day. So we can actually test this real quick. Because we're going to need this total volume, because in, in our order books, we're going to do the same thing. And instead of, um, we're going to call this total volume on each limit, so we can reduce the total volume of the exchange for all the asks, if that makes sense. All right, so we can test this real quick. We're going to say event uh, limits total volume. Let's test this real quick. Um, Let's copy some shenanigans here, like this, right? So we're going to make a new limit. It's going to be immutable. We make a buy order A, B, and then we're going to say assert equal. And we're going to say uh, limit total volume. And that should be equal to 200, right? Is that correct? And maybe we should do... Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let's test this real quick. Okay, tests are passing, right? Uh, because let's say I do 99, right? And I run the test. What's going on? I think I made a big mistake. Uh, limit total volume. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, my bad. No, 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 no. Should be good, should be good, actually. Uh, buy a limit, add, add, add. Total volume, yes, 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 let's uh, run. Oh wait, I made a mistake, my bad guys. Um, we need to do test here. I was, I was running the whole suite instead of this separate test. Right, so now it's failing because, um, where is this? Where is my com comparison? I'm looking for my comparison real quick. Uh, total volume. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm literally a, hey, um, we need to add these things, right? <laughs> Actually, I'm going to copy these two things Hop. like this. All right, that should be good. Uh, let's run it here. So we have some printing on. All right. So now it's going to fail because we say, uh, we said 199 and it should be 200, right? So if we make this 100 then the test is perfectly gonna pass and it's all gonna work fine like intended. Right, and this is basically a nice way you should actually learn in Rust to use these chaining methods, right? Iter, map, reduce, unwrap, collect, all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty nice if you know that stuff. Uh, it maybe takes some time to get used to it, but it is what it is. It's a very nice, it's a, a way of functional programming. Although it's not really functional programming, but you know what I want to say, right? It's, uh, they use the same mechanics. Anyway, so we have total volume. Um, so we can now basically fill a limit with a market order, right? So we can look through the, the orders in the limit and try to fill them. But we also need to go to our order book because what we're going to do and I'm looking for the order book, and I think we need we need to split uh, these things out very soon. So we have order book. We're also going to make a function here. We're going to say pub event, and we could say uh, fill market, or we could say place market order. Mm, let's say fill market order, right? Let's say and self, mutable self actually. Uh, the markets order is going to be an order, and Maybe we're going to return something, not quite sure. So first of all, what we need to do is, before we can fill this, we need to know, is this a bit or is this an ask? So we're going to say match order, match market order, uh, bit or ask, like this. And we're going to say, if 
if this bit or ask if it's a bit we're gonna handle the bit case and if it's an ask uh, we're gonna handle the ask case right so what happens if we are placing a bit market order right if you were want to buy bitcoins for example we need to get the asks to loop through right because if you buy you need a seller right so we need to fetch the sellers from the order book right the counterparty the other side of the trade are not buyers they are sellers right so we need to fetch the asks um, and we need to order them right we need to order them by price uh, so we're gonna make some uh, convenient some helper functions and let's make them maybe here or something we're gonna say fn or maybe pub fn i don't know let's make them public why not we're gonna say ask limits and the ask limits is gonna be um we're gonna say self and we're gonna return we're gonna return a vec of um we need mutable limits right because it's very important this one because if they are not mutable uh, we cannot adjust them and we need to adjust the memory of them it's very important how can we do this we could say something like uh, self and let's say let limits and sorting is going to be for another uh, is going to be for the next episode probably um, because it's kind of it's kind of advanced because our price is not just a float it's um, <laughs> It's an own price type, so we need to do some implementation of threads and all that shenanigans. We're going to say let the limits equals, and that's going to be a vec of uh, n mutable limit, like this. And we're going to say equals to self, uh, and we're going to say the asks, right? And then we could say values, but the problem is values will return a limit, but we need to have a mutable. <coughs> My voice. So we're going to say, let me drink some coffee real quick, actually. Ooh, delicious. So we're going to say, give me the values, right? Because it's a map. Give me the values of the map as a mutable. And then we're going to say, um, then we're going to say collect, I think. Uh, collect me, right? But we need to specify how are we going to collect these things? Well, I want collect me these as a vector of uh, a mutable limit like this I'm not quite sure if it's gonna work because this is al always some nasty stuff not gonna lie and then we could say limits uh, like this is this working no it's not uh, 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 values mud I think the problem is if you want to do this as mud we need to make sure this is a mutable itself right and then it's gonna work the same thing as we did um, instead of assigning this to a variable we could just say a return if you don't return it's not gonna work right unless you do this I guess yeah all right cool. so we can just do this and maybe we should change this um, here right we are returning this if you release this semicolon delete the semicolon you could do this and that should be the same thing which is nice cool so now we have a way to get the ask limits because we have a we have a hash map right if you see this here or ask or a hash map but we want actually uh, a, a vector of these things sorted by price depending if you want to buy or sell if it's if it's the asks we want to basically we want to buy at the, the lowest ask and we want to sell if you want to sell we want to sell at the highest bid right that's the thing so we need to sort it but that's going to be for another uh, episode Um, so we, we also need this for our bits right so we could just copy this in and then we're gonna say uh, bit limits that's gonna be the same shenanigans the only thing is gonna change is the bits right it's gonna be self bits values and then actually what we're gonna do in the next episode because it's already 30 minutes in and I want to keep this very short uh, for your focus actually so you don't get fried uh, we're gonna say bit if, if it's a bit what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna say uh, for uh, limit order right for limit order in self right if it's a bit what do we need to grab the asks right 
for self but ask limits right so we're going to have the sorted version right we need to sort them uh here actually you could say something like uh, to do sorting right uh like this and then we could say for example um we have the limit we could say limit order fill order right the function we did in our limit and then we could say fill the market order and the problem is this is going to be a mutable market order but we don't have that so we could say uh, uh like this mutable order and this is correct maybe i should do is it this like this not quite sure no maybe i did an another mistake Sometimes it's confusing. Let me quickly see what the compiler is saying. Uh, cannot borrow as mutable. Uh, not yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see. I thought this should be a mutable order. Not quite sure. Actually, it is. Why is it not working, to be honest? And why? Yeah, okay. I, I, it was basically VS Code that um, type hint me into problems. Right, so that's what's going to happen. We're going to uh, loop over these uh, asks. We're going to try to fill them. And of course, at a certain point of time, we need to see if the, um, if the market order is filled, right? If that's the case, well, then we're going to just break. Okay, then we're going to break out of the loop because it's already filled. Like this. And... Um, it's basically the same case with the with the, with the asks, right? But I'm gonna keep this video short, so we're gonna uh, leave. We're gonna stop here, and in the next episode, we are gonna complete this. We're gonna test this, and we are gonna make sure it's sorted. We're gonna make sure that we cannot place market orders if we don't have enough liquidity and all that good stuff. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and leave your questions in the comments. And let me know if you have any troubles with following these. Uh, so-called beginner tutorials because it's going to get a little bit more advanced but hey sometimes it is what it is we need to keep raising the bar right so um, thanks for watching jump into the discord if, if you have questions and I will single-handedly answer them and I'll see you in the next video or in one of my live streams cheers